Welcome back. You're still watching Aquaba, where we're talking all things the Africa Cup of Nations that is out in Cote d'Ivoire. Now, 24 teams, 54 matches, and five cities with six stadiums will be used for the duration of this competition. Brian, let's dive now into the cities that will be hosting this prestigious competition. This is a good time for African football, and I think I can't wait until I experience an AFCON live. Have you experienced one live? Yes. How many? Hmm. Do you know my age now, Ando? <laughs> <laughs> my first AFCON that I covered was 2010 in Angola. Ah. So do the math. And the atmosphere? Electrifying. Yeah. Nothing comes close to that. I mean, when you also the 2013 edition of the AFCON. Yes. Uh, when you welcome the world into your backyard. Yeah. Nothing, nothing compares to that. You know, yeah. I think I think if you talk about two main things, 2010 FIFA World Cup in South Africa, yeah. 2013 Afcon, those were the two moments I'll never ever replace, no matter what happens. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the cities, right? There will be a buzz. Starting yeah. off with their capital city out in Cote d'Ivoire, that being Abidjan. You know, I'm going to say the French way, right? Abidjan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. We know that the stadium, Lorraine Poku, is also there. Um, what, what, what's so prestigious about the city? When you look at it, I mean, this is uh, the, the, the largest city and it's the capital of the country anyway. Uh, but from a footballing point of view, it has produced stars galore. Mm. Lorraine Poku is one of those. Yes. Didier Drogba comes from there as well. Golden you generation. Didier Zokora coming from there as well. So there's plenty that happens. Mm. And most of the population is there anyway. 21.5% mm. of the population is based in that place. It's it's one of uh, one of you talk about the biggest cities in the world or the from a from a uh, population point of view. It is just behind the likes of Lagos, Cairo, Kinshasa, Dar es Salaam, and Johannesburg. Mm. It's a sixth overall, yeah. country-wise, when really you talk about that. There are going to be two stadiums there in that city because we have five cities, we have six stadiums. Yes. Two of those stadiums are going to be the ones we're going to see one of the matches, the open of will be there, mm -hmm. as well as the game that's going to... I find the game very interesting because there's a story around it. I, I the Zambia versus into... DR Congo stadium was also going to be played okay. there as well. Yeah. So, I wanted to go into match day one, just quickly, because okay. we're talking about Abidjan, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk about that Cote d'Ivoire game up against Guinea-Bissau. Guinea-Bissau, obviously, how or what do they need to do to silence the crowd? And also, they're going up against an Ivorian team that they have so much pressure on them because they want to write their own story. Yeah. Remember, they are the elephants of yesteryear were glorified and all, yeah. and they failed to somewhat cement themselves in African football. Listen, I mean, if you, if you, if you, look, if you look at uh, Cote d'Ivoire, the way they are coming into this competition, first of all, being a host is really a pressure. Yes. Pressure moment for That's you. probably going to be the most packed game. It is going to be massive. Because yes. That's why you want to start. And also because, you know, amongst the fans in the stadium are going to be the legend of yesteryear of Ivorian football. Yeah. They're going to be there. Mm -hmm. Your Lord Poku will be Yo. there. He's 69 now. And there's no time for you to walk into that field. Didier Drogba is there. <laughs> your your Torre brothers are always going to yeah. be mentioned around yeah. that same segment. So it's a big one for them. And you're going to have a match day named after a legend of, mm. of well, Ivorian the football. The match ball. Uh. Named after Ivorian. So I think for me, if they can get over the nerves of the first game, Ooh. That's where it all starts. Okay. Against Guinea-Bissau, three points what they must get. Anything less than that will be suicidal, will be a problem for the competition proper. And you know Guinea-Bissau comes into this one boasting with their heads up high. Yep. I mean, they beat a Nigeria that had your a star-studded front line. That is what I'm saying. Guinea-Bissau are not going to be any pushover in this group. Yeah. The fact that they are here, the fact that you are amongst the 24 out of 54 African nations that have made the competition, it means you are not going to be a pushover. You're going to come in here, you're going to really prove your worth. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were in the same group as Nigeria in the qualifying phase, so they know exactly what to expect, they know exactly what mm -hmm. they can do in this. So an upset for them will be holding Porto in the opening game of the competition. Yeah. You know, so that's, that's going to be a big thing for them. Let's go to Yamasukro. Um, Diote, educate the Gen Z <laughs> because I am here for you. <laughs> it, 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 you know the nice thing about the Gen Z is that you guys have internet. <laughs> and you're able to you sit can down always and browse. just Google who is You can is browse Diote. certain things and everything else. I, I, I managed to see two players. Uh, one collapse during a match and the other one passing away. Tiote is one of those. Mm. When you talk about players that actually done very well over the years. I mean, I was part of that Ivorian team in 2015. Yeah. And uh, so he comes from there. 
So that's that's a big venue. Yeah. You know, uh, Sheikh Ismail Diote. Um, he passed away at the age of 30 when he's in 2017 is when he passed away. So that's home to him. You also have other venues that are home to other stores. Oh stores, man, Boake, we cannot not talk about the... the, the hair, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. As a yeah, fan yeah. of Manchester City, of I course I'm going to love this city. And Bassa, and Bassa <laughs> will tell you when Yaya was there, he literally just played a guitar and everybody just really yeah. went with, with him. So those are the other venues. The other two stadiums are newly built for this competition. Yeah. So the one now one is named after Laurent Puko is one of those in San Pedro. And the other one is Corojo. That's another stadium to talk about. Well, really interesting. A billion rands spent on revamping or actually yeah. building these stadiums. The stage has now been set. As we know, the CAF Women's Champions League was the guinea pig just this year, but all systems go. Yeah. And let me tell you, there's no stopping them now because every single person has their eyes on Cote d'Ivoire.